let me introduce our next speaker uh, a great uh, person a great uh, worker uh, dr ghazala rahman rafiq she is director of sindhi sindh abhyas academy at zebist karachi she will be talking on a very different perspective on nutrition and counseling of sindhi students so a very unique topic that she has opted to select dr uh, ghazala rahman saiba is an educationist and social reformer from karachi she is daughter of eminent hasan ali abdur rahman she was one of the founder members of women action forum in 1981 and she did her phd in education from university of california santa barbara after completing her phd dr ghazala as an academician was interested to preserve sindhi language she is director of the sindh abhyas academy which is housed at zebist the institute offers education for the subject of sindhi studies including sindhi history geography culture economics and philosophy for undergraduate and graduate degrees so without a further ado let me request dr ghazala rahman rafiq saiba to please uh, share her thoughts <laughs> can you hear me ji adi we can hear you good thank you dr kazi and dear mazhar and sindh vision I'm going to talk very quickly so that I can cover the material that I have written up. It's an essay, and <clears throat> according to your manifesto, Sin Vision wishes to work for the promotion of health, economic development, and poverty alleviation in Sin. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will be speaking on nutrition and counseling, or the lack thereof. I'm truly honored to be part of this webinar. Thank you for inviting me. please close your eyes for a few moments and follow my instructions only for a few moments dear sin vision people please visualize a university in the united states canada japan europe australia anywhere in the world now please visualize the faces of the students there okay good you can quickly see that they are bright with the health that good food has given them now you will say but this is the first world adi ghazala and they are in a developed country they have everything agreed now please visualize students at a university in the punjab what do you see healthy bright yes strong young men and women energetic now please let your beautiful eyes remain closed a little longer and bring into mental focus our own sindhi students look carefully and closely at them whether at karachi university or sin university or kharpur or anywhere in sin what do you see you may not like what i have to say but i speak the truth as i see it i will tell you what i have seen i have seen time and time again thin malnourished students too many times on my visits to sin university especially i have seen the hunger and poverty of our students there i have listened to dozens of students who are studying at our universities in sind and i have visited hostels and i have seen their food being cooked i assure you that you will not wish to eat that food i have seen big cauldrons but are they gra being stirred full of horse dal and oil we invite our kids from villages and then we starve them in the universities or we poison them with bad food i have explored this problem many times i know students who never had chronic stomach ailments in their villages <clears throat> they drank water from the canal or river and they ate simple food from their mother's poor cooking but the hostel killed their young stomachs with its inferior food and dirty water have you visited the hostel at sin university recently When I visited in express dismay Vice Chancellor Burfat once suggested that I raise funds in Karachi for the hostel nutrition program these are our universities from where we expect since future leaders to emerge by the way the faculty club food is also famous for making you ill the look in our students eyes their weak and malnourished bodies are a disgrace for sin 
but something can be done about this. We can change the scenario for the better. Sindh has one of the worst statistics in stunting in the world, as someone mentioned earlier, or in Pakistan. Our people are growing smaller, shorter. Why? Lack of a proper diet. How do we fix this problem? We appoint trained nutritionists in hostel kitchens and campus cafeterias. We offer healthy subsidized meals, bursting with the nutrition that they need for their studies and to encourage creative and critical thinking without which you cannot build a progressive nation. Maybe small businesses should be allowed into campuses that cater healthy food and drink, small, healthy, well-supervised snack shops everywhere on campus. There is usually plenty of land on campuses to grow organic vegetables. Botany departments can get involved to study since rich flora that has nourished the Indus Valley civilization for centuries, but today produces only skinny, tired kids. Or let us take the Aga Khan University hospital model. If I'm not mistaken, their cafeterias have inputs from the nutrition science people. These people care about their people. They want to win the game of life. When my children were growing up in America, the schools had free lunch programs for students whose parents were working or could not afford some meals. A small carton of milk, an apple, a piece of cheese, all this went a long way in keeping children right in schools and universities. Our universities can have dairy farms on campus. Jobs and work for students can come from these. <clears throat> in England, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was labeled milk snatcher when she stopped the free milk in British schools. Her neoliberal policies resembled what the world saw recently in Mr. Trump's harsh politics policies towards the poor of America. You see, the British knew all nations that care about their children and their people know. They look into the details. God and the devil are both in the details. The British public who I saw yelling in the streets of London knew that a simple thing like milk was not a small thing for a child's development. All us in these students need lots of milk to flourish. Please notice I do not use the word compete. I don't like the word compete. I prefer flourish. But turn a B term. Actually, children and young adults in sin from birth to 25 years of age have special needs. Early this century, I remember being involved in a plan in California called the California First Five, where the state was to provide health care preschool and nutrition to every child born in the state. The preamble to the document said something to the effect so that every citizen in California can grow up to meet their full potential. We must provide the right care before the age of five. So eyes of babies were checked and teeth protected and the very young were screened for learning disabilities very early. Why? so they could be helped early, before it was too late, before the nation was weakened, the way sin has been weakened. Now we have a large number roaming the land as our worthy presenter talk told us earlier. Large number roaming the land without proper direction because they cannot even think normally. So forgive me if I sound like I'm far away from higher education issues, which is this forum's moot point. By the way, this is an excellent forum. I believe successful higher education is not successful unless you consider the health of the whole student body first and then talk of greater plans. <clears throat> My dear friends and colleagues, we cannot build a nation on an empty stomach or on a sick with diarrhea student. I recently interviewed a former student who was at Sin University during 2005 and 2008. And he told me that hepatitis was prevalent in 80% of our students who ate hostile food. Gastroenteritis was also prevalent because of the polluted water they drank. We are trying to build a nation without strong legs. Our people do not have healthy bodies, which are necessary for healthy minds to go forward and do the heavy lifting necessary for a prosperous sin. And let me also tell you, dear visionaries of Sindh, 
that the higher education students who you and I are genuinely so concerned about because each of us on this webinar knows what we dream for, for our beloved land and her people, their living conditions are no better. Their toilets are a disgrace. No one wants to talk about this, but toilets all over since educational institutions are a disgrace. Whether school, college or university, but who cares? If I offend you, my dear colleagues, forgive me, but tell me, how can we expect to instill dignity and pride in our youth when we do not give them an environment that can inculcate and support that very dignity and pride? Do you remember how good you felt when you first entered a clean and cheerful restroom on a campus in another country? In Sindh, we lack an environment for true growth and development. Look at any sector of life. Look at our university students' transportation within the university. Why don't we shuttle them about? They walk and walk in that horrible heat of summer for a little bit of bad food. I have walked with them and eaten that food. By the way, <clears throat> students even in India are not just studying. They're swimming, they're rowing. What is wrong with us? With the river nearby in Jamshoro, why are there no water sports? Countries that flourish have X number of PE units as requirements at the university level. A fit body has a fit mind. And how can you have well-rounded students when you have no compulsory electives like art and music, history, so on? And there is no functioning health center on any campus. Health centers are an integral part of a normal campus for both physical and mental health. But our students end up going to Lyakut Medical when they have a problem, and sometimes they're not even served there. I know this. They really do not know where to go or what to do to solve their numerous problems, and the universities just don't care. They could be back in their villages as far as the authorities are concerned. Also, I believe overall, our students need many more support, stipends, and scholarships to survive the harsh living conditions of their campuses. Someone mentioned self-esteem issues. Yes, I agree. Not all, but too many lack the confidence necessary to tackle the issues they will face as soon as they come out of university. The internet has done much to liberate our students because our universities were not encouraging them at all to find themselves at an age when the young all over the world begin to flourish with powerful new ideas about building a new life for themselves and others. What will build the self-esteem of the youth on since campuses? Sports, music, art, theater, science labs? Yes, we have some, but not enough, not for all. Former Vice Chancellor Hassan Ali Abdul Rahman wanted to build an observatory and chess clubs and drama societies before they removed him for his progressive ideas. We lack proper avenues for this flourishing, this necessary for our youth. Every American campus, high school, junior college, or university has something that they call little theater. I was lucky. I had a multicultural center where all the world's culture could be imbibed and enjoyed. <clears throat> now I'm speaking about nutrition of the mind and soul. campuses Art, music, poetry, dance, philosophy, politics, you name it. Faculty, students, visitors, people from the city and other countries, you just need an application to present and you're, or you're invited. A great exchange of culture and beauty can take place, refines the student from within. This was always available in the evenings at my campus abroad. Mental stimulation of plays, live performances of all kinds, as well as excellent movies and documentaries all this is nutrition that uplifts a student's mind and soul, but we don't have this here in Sin. There's also a shocking vacuum in the area of aesthetics and beauty on our campuses. It's almost as if we worship ugliness. That is not the Sindhi way. We are a beautiful people who need beauty around us. Let us give this to our precious youth in their educational institutions. I'm proud to say that my ancestors did this long ago in old Sindh. <clears throat> More recently, I do remember 
my parents caring for the plants at the SM Law College in Karachi and the Sin Madrasa Girls School, Fatma Jinnah Girls School, now run by Shazad Roy in Ranshur Rhines, Old Karachi. So why can't our campuses, why can't our youth on campuses have better lives? Why can't <clears throat> their physical world be made more comfortable? Where are their gardens? Every university has many gardens. Their on-campus recreation facilities are non-existent. I also want to ask why our youth does not have a good work ethic. Why not? They also lack discipline. Why? They only fear authority and then they try to suck up to it. Why? Where is the freedom of thought? Departments are full of scaremongers who suppress even visitors like me sometimes who come to talk with students with full permission in advance. <clears throat> what is going on here? <clears throat> what are they afraid of? Open minds? Missing in action at a university? So my dear Sin visionaries, ladies and gentlemen, my Sindhi brothers and sisters who love Sin, what are our plans? Only other third world, world countries may be as poor as us or poorer, but they have better facilities for their students. They care more. And let us admit that the Iranians and the Turks and the Malaysians and the Europeans and the Israelis, nearly the whole world has cared more for their young than we have. I'm going to skip this because I don't want to run out of time. Um, Everyone I think, I think you, have, you have five more minutes. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So not everybody plans for their young according to their own aspirations. I was thinking about my Israeli, the Jewish girl who went from Karachi when I was a child, went to Israel, what her training was. What are ours for our youth? Only empty university degrees or healthy bodies and strong minds. We don't want our youth to continue to succumb to corruption for obtaining jobs. We want them to be able to find creative new ways to serve their families and Sindh and therefore Pakistan as well. <clears throat> so you see, before we talk of what HEC wants, we keep talking about that at Zabis, what HEC wants of our universities, for me, it is important that we ask ourselves what we want for our youth. They are our youth after all. And we could begin with good food and exercise for every student, every day, in every school, college, and university. Our students do not look athletic or even healthy. We need to change this. It can be done. Firstly, can we really, finally, can we really talk about higher education until we strengthen lower education? Very quickly, on the subject of counseling students, there is so much to say mainly that it is a highly developed field in some parts of the world and that it makes a big difference in the lives of students just before, during, and on the way out of a university for many students. The role of a counselor can be crucial for many students. Valuable advice about how to navigate university life successfully. But here in Sindh, it is not only non-existent, but students are made to feel desperate about small things like talking to faculty, about a change in grade or a makeup exam because of an illness. <clears throat> there is much faculty terrorism. Yes, our students can turn nasty as well, but I think that is the fault of an unfair, unhealthy system that does not understand the needs of our students and is definitely not student centric. I'm talking largely of our Sarkari universities. But I want to tell all of us faculty, we are there because of them. The students, they are not there because of us. Career counseling is unknown on SINCE campuses. Students growing from here to there with mark sheets in their hand and no one opens up their offices to give them a jump start ahead. Why should they? They never received anything of the kind themselves. We are a people without a plan. There is no concept of life counseling or academic counseling or any kind of renomai of any kind for our struggling young, our future. Many campuses abroad have something called Office of Student Life. They direct a student towards housing that they may need, career placements for jobs, clubs they may wish to join or create. They even advertise and provide 
grants for other projects students may get involved in as enrichment for student life. Dreamers of a bright dawn in Sindh, dear visionaries, we have not defined the playing field for our children. They need our nourishment. It is all hit and miss in the corridors of higher education in Sindh. Students honestly do not know where to go. <clears throat> and why bother with higher education when there are no pathways to the jobs our students need? Government jobs are for the few with those amazing privileged contacts. Why do we need contacts when it is supposed to be a system based on merit? I often receive calls from parents and students. The discrimination against the poor and unconnected is very intense. No amount of merit can overcome the bias against the poor. But perhaps the real issue is job creation. As someone said, industry was flourishing in villages and small towns. Our students would not be running after the few government jobs available and could return home to their loving families and provide right there. So let us think about job creation at the local level and tie talent and qualification to right where a student lives. Maybe Karo and Thabeji and Tato will become centers of learning and industry again, as they perhaps were 500 years ago. Well, I had this dream. Thank you very much for your time. Gia Sindh.